addicted to being sick, being in withdrawal, and then getting out of it. What? Addicted to being dope sick? I'll explain. Let's get into it. K Rugs, the Sober Dog here. Before I get into it, remember Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. Please seek professional medical help if you have an addiction. Also, thank you everybody. If you want to support us, check out the description, Patreon, shirts, everything. Sober Dogs, yeah! Or just share, like the video, subscribe. It's the best way you can help support the channel. Thank you everybody. I'm going to tell you a story too at the end that proves this point of being addicted to being dope sick and then addicted to getting better from that. It's gross, but it proves the point. People are probably saying, okay, some people have no idea when I first explained this, who would possibly be addicted or want the feeling of being dope sick? And I totally get that. It sounds insane to a, a, you know, an outside observer who's never been there. Here's what it is. There is this weird and random f I don't know, phenomenon is the word that comes to mind. I don't know if that's accurate, but that a lot of people in addiction like myself included, when you get sick, dope sick, and if you don't know all the details about that, I'll put a card up for the other videos on dope sick. Basically that full body flu times 10. That's how I always describe it and it's so accurate. Sweats, chills, diarrhea, vomiting, bones ache, muscles ache, anything feels impossible to just go 10 feet. Oh, it's brutal. So we get in that stage, people that you know, our inactive addiction, specifically opioids, heroin, oxy, any of those, fentanyl. And until you either get your next dose or uh, MAT med like Suboxone or Methadone, or you wait it out seven to 10 days, you're going to be sick. Now, after the last dose of any of those substances, within six to eight hours, dope sickness is starting. You know, occasionally it would be 16 hours if it was a really potent batch or if it had legs they call it you know it had legs that lasted long long spider legs but uh most of the time eight to ten hours after your last batch it's starting to come on and if you don't get something new it is going to get progressively worse every hour for the next day or so and it's going to be at its peak for three to four days and then it'll slowly start getting better every hour for the next two or three days but during it Oh my God. So what ends up happening to a lot of us addicts in that time is well, you're in the middle of addiction, you get high, then eight hours, maybe you get high at, at 11 p.m. So now you go to bed at whatever time and you get up at seven, eight, nine in the morning and you're starting to be dope sick. You're, you're, it's already started and you're getting worse. If you don't have anything to do right there, it's just gonna keep getting worse. If you go out and do something, all of a sudden, everything goes away. That feeling is what exactly I'm talking about. You have sweats, chills, vomit, diarrhea, your whole body. The middle of summer, I got a full hoodie on. I got sweatpants on. I got a winter coat on. I am freezing, I'm hot, I'm cold, and I'm hot, and I'm cold, and I can't focus, and my mouth's dry, and, and my nose is just running, and I'm yawning. The second any opioid I do, it is gone. Imagine having a terrible flu, and you could just, you know, take this one thing, and within five seconds, all your symptoms are gone. And not only are, here's the, the problem, so when you're in that, here's baseline of normal life. When you're in that dope sickness, you're way down. You feel terrible. You're a negative 10. If you do something, you don't go back up the baseline. You go up above it. That is what is so addicting about this feeling. And so I said addicted to being dope sick. There were times when I would wake up sick and then I would go get something and I'd go back to my house and I'd have it. I would literally not do it, waiting for the dope sickness to get worse and worse and worse. Hours go by and then when it's really bad, I would do it because it was so addicting to just be sitting there like, 
I don't know how to describe it. Just this insane state where like I can't move. I, I am dripping sweat. Like if you ask me to walk to the kitchen, it felt like, uh, you, you know, I got to do a marathon. But then boom, the second I do this or snort this or whatever, it, it all goes away and I feel like a million bucks. So this is something that a lot of people do, I did, and a lot of people I used with did and I talked to. Nobody actually is like, all right, I'm not gonna go get my stuff now because I want the dope sickness to get worse. But they'll go get the stuff because when you have it in front of you, you feel safe, you trust, it's there, it's not going anywhere. Then occasionally people would wait a little bit because they are addicted to that feeling of being feeling like you're dead to feeling like a million bucks. It made the, the high, the come up better, I guess. You know, you're on, let's say hour eight, it's just starting to kick in, you get high and you go from a tiny bit below to high versus you wait and you're on hour 16, that dope sickness is bad, you go way up and it's this immediate effect. Your whole body gets warm and it's really addicting. It's weird and it's hard to comprehend if you haven't been in it, why anyone would possibly want to be sick and better and sit like that, but it is what it is. Now I told you I'm gonna tell you a story about it. I was going one day, there's also a phenomenon of you could be dope sick out of your mind and if somebody calls and says they got something or you, you, you make a call and that person finally answers, uh, meet me in 10 minutes. As soon as you start like going there and get the call that it's there, you'll start to feel better. It's like the high before the high. Your brain 10 minutes ago was like, we have nothing, we're screwed, we're on hour 20 of dope sickness, I feel terrible. But then as soon as that call said, no, nah, I got it, be here in 10 minutes, you start to feel better, not like completely, but it's the weirdest, it's, it's that psychological knowing it's coming. So I'm at my house one day, sick out of my mind, and I get that call, so I start going. Did start to feel better, those butterflies in my stomach, everything. The dope sickness was at a point too, I was on like past day one, so it was pretty bad to where even though I knew I was getting something, it still didn't totally take away. So I go get it, I go pull over on a different street, and I'm literally sitting in my car, threw up outside of the car. Also, the other area of my body, I'm not gonna get into too much detail, had to run in Walmart and do that out. So I get my stuff ready. I, I literally, usually like you ask any addict, um, you know, would you wait to go do your stuff and then go to the bathroom? Like, yeah, of course, our stuff comes before anything. That I could not wait at that point. That was one time where I had to run in and go to the bathroom before I did anything because it was coming out. So I get back in the car, I'm getting it ready. It starts coming out again of every area, every orifice in my body. This time I was like, I hurry up, I gotta do it. Go to do it. It was the weirdest thing. I did it and it was like everything got sucked back in, as weird as that sounds. Instantly did not have to go to the bathroom. Instantly did not have to throw up. The sweat's gone. Immediate body temperature rise. Now I am no longer cold, no longer chills. And like I said, it was like creeping out and it like got sucked back up. And opioids do have a constipative effect. Um, so they, they make it very hard to go to the bathroom. So I think that's what was actually happening. But it's gross, it's nasty, but this is a real effect that a lot of people enjoy. I loved it at the time. Again, I wouldn't like actively seek it if it was like, here, there's the stuff. I'm going to get the stuff. That's most important. But if I had the ability with the stuff in front of me to wait a little bit to do it until I felt like crap. It was just this, this psychological of feeling of being at the lowest of lows and going to the highest of highs and people chase that and like that and want that. And it's weird. That's what addicted to being dope sick is. All right. 
check out the other video all about the real truth about being dope sick and the stuff nobody talks about or wants to know about because it's the part that sucks, but it's what we need to talk about. K-Rugs, I'm out. See ya.